that you know, when I read the things that Jesus says, there are often times when I want to say, no, no, that can't be right. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That seems backwards to me. Surely what Jesus meant was we put our treasure where our hearts are. We put our money into the things that matter most to us. But now he's pretty clear, heart follows treasure. Let's say that you have a friend opening a restaurant, and she asks you to invest, to become a partner. Now, you know her to be a great cook, and she has a real gift for hospitality. She's also great with people, and she has a head for business. And so you sense that she has all that she needs to be successful, to create wonderful experiences for the guests who come to her place. So you decide that, yes, you will put your treasure there. In all likelihood, you're going to begin to take a real interest in that restaurant. You'll be watching closely what's happening. You'll offer your time, your energy, your advice, if it's asked, right? Nobody likes unsolicited advice. But you'll offer those things to see if you might be able to make things work even better at the restaurant. You're going to recommend that place to your friends, and you're going to visit often to see how the food and the service and the setting are getting better, maintaining their level of excellence. You will become invested. Your money went first, and then you followed it with your heart. Now, in the Bible, the word heart isn't just talking about a physical organ or even the place of our emotions. It has to do with our whole beings, the very core of who we are. Jesus says, where you put your treasure, the rest of you will be there as well. Or to put it differently, Jesus is saying that our possessions, our treasure, will change us so that we care more about them than we do about other things. And so if we're not careful, he warns, our possessions will transform us. They'll control us. They'll even possess us. Jesus is saying, don't let the stuff of this world take power over your life. Collecting and hoarding and worrying and storing and buying and selling and obsessing over stuff keeps us from being concerned about things that really matter. Clothes and food and precious metal, moths and rust and thieves are going to take them from us. Financial security, power, independence, reputation, they can be gone in the blink of an eye. Instead, Jesus says, we're to step away from slavery to cultural values of wealth and prestige. And instead, we are to follow Jesus' call to live a radical life, an upside-down kind of life of trust and obedience, living the way Jesus tells us to live. I like how one writer put it, we would do better to invest our money in activities that transform the world than in securities that protect our over-accumulated surplus. Jesus says we should invest our treasures in the right things. So what are our treasures? Well, of course that's money. But in this day and age, I'd argue that sometimes the treasure that's even more important to many of us is our time. There are people who'd rather write a check than give of their time. Time is so precious, we live we busy, busy lives. So treasure includes material possessions and time and energy and talents. Or as we named them in our church vows, our treasure would be our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. Where do we put those? What's important to us? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, some of you may know this passage is part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. This particular section could be called the Sermon on the Mount. 
What part of you are you investing in furthering the kingdom of God? How much of your time and money, energy, is spent trying to work your way up the ladder to make all the money you can to be known about town? And how much is being used to share God's love, God's grace? What amount of your treasure is invested in meeting other people's needs, seeking justice, ensuring dignity for everyone? If the boss at work asked you to do some reading and go through a workbook, would you do it? Would you give that same amount of time doing the same with God's holy work? If people at work are taking a collection to buy a gift for the newlywed in the office, would you contribute? Would you give at least that much to the collection to build, rebuild people's lives following a flood or a hurricane or an explosion? If your company asked you to work overtime so a big project could get finished, would you do it? And if there were food bags to be packed, or a house to be painted, or notes to be written, could you spare the time? So let's say you have this friend who started this church some 2,000 years ago. And he asks you to invest, to partner. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. As we consider our stewardship pledges for 2016, I invite you for the next two weeks to pray. To pray about where your treasure will be and where your heart will go. Thank you.